Hey guys, welcome to Sada Takes Your Facebook Questions. So we know out there that you guys have a lot of questions on the equipment and the processes and the application and sometimes it's best to just come and sit down with the main man. Tony, thanks for taking the time to answer the questions. We sent the call out and we got a lot in. So let's just let's just go through them and hear what some of the users of the equipment are asking. Um, so Philip wrote in and asked, what's the best gun for better atomization of the new bases and also how that might apply to water base as well? Okay, well I guess as you know and, and many of the people listening will know, we've uh, had several spray guns over the years that have evolved um, from the NR95 to the JET 2000 to the JET 3000 and now we're in our uh, JET 4000 series so for us uh, I guess to answer specifically on which gun um, the SATA JET 4000 would definitely be the choice as far as atomization but what is most important I think not only in the atomization but that in the 4000 SATA was able to develop a nozzle design that brings those droplets much closer together than they've ever been. And by bringing them close together, you don't have gaps between the droplets, so it allows the spray gun to get coverage faster because you're not slowing the gun speed down to right. fill those droplets. Um, so what that also does is it does not allow for solvent or water to lay between the droplets, so it helps to press that out quicker, helps to evaporate quicker, so between the atomization and those droplets being closer together, we're getting faster film build with less paint and we're, we're speeding up the time uh, for drying between coats and even for through cure. Yeah. Now I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get down here and get to this question because I remember seeing it. Um, we had a question about the differences between um, the 3000 and the 4000. So somebody okay. considering the upgrade, what are the major differences to think about that investment for? Okay, well with the, with the 3000 gun, um, which got right here, this is a 3000 digital HVLP. With that 3000 gun, we had uh, ergonomics were set up to be very comfortable in your hand, very well balanced. Um, the gun sprayed max pressure 29 PSI in an HVLP or up to 35 in an RP version of it. When we went to the 4000, some of the things that they changed in it was not only to make the gun um, slimmer, so in this digital version, you'll see where, the, where it's much slimmer. Uh, the handle is more balanced over the center of your hand. It's about three-eighths of an inch shorter. So it allows for a lighter weight. They've trimmed a lot of the, of the I guess you'd say the meat out of the body. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's a much lighter weight gun than it was before uh, by 15% um, and better balanced. Um, other simple things, the air cap now turns off in just one, one revolution. So it's a much smoother, larger thread, much easier to clean. So whether it's solvent or water, it's great to have that cleanability. Um, just like on the 3000, the uh, cup inlet is a, called QCC or Quick Cup Connect. So there's no threads inside the body, so it's real easy to clean. It's a real, very, very short fluid passage. So when I take my air cap off and take my fluid tip out, the fluid passage is only about three quarters of an inch long so you can literally see through it and it's very easy to see that you've got your gun clean. Uh, on this gun they also changed the fan control now. So the fan control you can turn with one finger with your thumb. It's just a quarter turn from fully open to fully closed. It's meant to be a micro adjustment but now I can tell exactly how far I've turned that because in previous guns that could turn almost two revolutions and you didn't know if you had turned it down a quarter of a turn or if you had turned it one and a quarter you uh -huh. couldn't tell by looking at it so that was simpler. Um, all of the the gun um, on the 4000 uh, the internal passages are, are nickel chemically treated so the air passages everything is protected from water or solvent. Uh, been a great great spraying gun for us. Yeah, it's been a great change. Um, I've, I've talked to a lot of guys that have went ahead and made that switch, and it is an investment when you're thinking about going, hey, I got this 3000, it's working great for me. Is there, you know, do I upgrade and spend that? And there are some benefits in the short. The shortness is great too, so tighter areas on cars these days. Well, I think the one other thing that, biggest difference in the way we'd spray a 4000 to a 3000, with the 4000 we're able to spray at much lower air pressures. Mm -hmm. So now the maximum air pressure on an RP on, a, on the older 3000 model was 35, this one maximum air pressure is 32. But what we're finding is most people now are um, seeing even up around that 29 or 30 pound range where they don't need that much air and it can in some cases, especially when it gets warm, can dry the clear too quickly or dry uh, uh, just too fast. Right. So by turning that air pressure down and spraying this gun in that 26, 27, 28, 29 pound range maximum, um, we're seeing by lowering the air pressure, we're able to get a much faster wetting. Uh, we're certainly then at lower air pressures getting better transfer efficiency and also cutting over spray. So um, the guns are, are 
are able with the finer atomization with the droplets closer together, mm -hmm. HVLP or RP, we're able to spray these gums at a lower pressure than we were in the past, which is something that people have been asking for. Yeah, now let's talk about that a little bit and how it applies to, I think across the U.S. right now we got some drought situations going on. And when the heat gets to rise in with water, we have some issues. Mm -hmm. and, and we had a couple of questions that were specific to paint line, to DuPont, DuPont's Chromax and Sickens Auto's Wave. And as we give those tips, which we will do, we will address those, you know, in writing on the page so that you'll have the correct answer. But as we were going through those, there were some times when we said, hey, you know, it depends on the weather. Um, explain that a little bit, because I think, you know, we know in the collision industry that it, it depends on the weather when I'm working with my sealers and adhesives, but it's the same with paint. Okay, well, with paint, uh, what we're finding with water, we do have less uh, options for reducers. You know, we in many cases have a standard water and maybe a long water or a slow water, um, but we don't have four or five like we might have with activators or other other uh, temperature reducers. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option. So for us, air pressure is a big deal. Um, we've developed nozzle sets for those hot, dry climates. So when we're getting up in that 105 degrees and 4% humidity that we might have in a desert climate, mm -hmm. um, it dry, the waterborne dries very, very fast. And so when you have that, it isn't so bad if you're painting a panel, but if you're trying to do a blend and the water is, is evaporating before uh, you get the base coat to lay down, um, it can leave a grainy appearance or leave a, a blotchy appearance. So for us, the ability with these new 4000s to turn the air pressure down lower, and we're finding we're, we're able to spray down with that HVLP gun in that 22, 23 pound range in uh -huh. those hot, dry climates, um, or with the RP being able to spray it for water uh, down in that 23, 24 pound range rather than being up on the higher end. It allows you to let the droplets wet up the way they should. Opposite effect of that, when we get into cool, wet, or we get into a real humid environment where water wants to be slower to evaporate, we can turn those pressures back up and get the evaporation that we need. That's a great little tool, and I'm making the switch for me down south. Was a really bit official. Well, Charles has a question about why we've got that paint cleaner, the rapid clean system in the booth. So I okay. think the best way to answer that is for us to just get in there, suit up, and uh, talk about why we've got that cleaner in there. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can let's go. That. All right. All right. So Charles's question was, why do we have the RCS, that rapid cleaning system, here in the booth with us? So let's explain a little bit. Okay. What the rapid cleaning system is for us is a way to keep more efficient, um, to get your guns cleaned out immediately. It's certainly best suited for waterborne, but it works great with solvent-borne also. The reason we have it in the booth is because not only can we paint with this, there's a setting where we switch it towards spraying. Um, I paint my car, or paint my panels. In this case, um, you'll see I have two different colors here. Mm -hmm. I may have two or three different colors if I'm painting multiple bumper covers. So if we've got multi-panels that we're having to do multi-bumper covers, uh, or maybe on a, on a uh, Tuesday morning we're trying to knock out three or four bumper covers so they can get to assembly. Um, then that's what this is for. So we'll kind of demonstrate that. Right. And what that does by having this in the booth, the quick rinse between colors, I can go right to my next color, go right to my paintwork, never leave the booth. Um, the less times I walk in and out of the booth, uh, certainly the less contamination I'm going to have, the less dirt we're going to have in, in and out of the booth. But also it's just there's less chance for interference. Um, you can mix up all your colors at once, come into the booth, stay in there, um, be more efficient, use your time better not perhaps get interrupted or caught out in the in the shop in between. So for us it's an efficiency matter, uh, plus whatever cleaner we're using in here, uh, especially in a solvent circumstance, it keeps all the odors and the paint fumes in the paint booth um, where it's exhausted. So uh, makes it real simple. So right. we'll, we'll demonstrate it. Let's do it. All right. First thing I'm going to do is pull the trigger on this, then we just painted a panel. All right. So we'll do that first. So now I'm going to go from spraying to cleaning. There's a cleaning position. I'm 
On this side we have a button for blow drying this. I like to take the air cap off. Blow that off. And as you'll see on the inside that, the paint film is clean. It's awesome. It's ready to go for the next color. So I can simply cut, plug in my next color. And I'm ready to go paint. We're ready to do it. And that's a great bit of fix. It's not only just for bumper cover applications, but we got a lot of production shops that are pre-panel painting. Yep. Um, to speed up, you know, either fast track delivery of cars or whatever. So that's why we've got the RCS in a booth. It's for efficiency to going between panel to panel when you're doing multiple colors. And also is keeping that contamination down for every time you open and close that door. You can keep a cleaner job. It's a happier job, especially for the detail department. So, Tony, that was a great run of Facebook questions. And we'll keep doing those. So, guys, just keep sending in your questions to us. That way uh, we'll know what you've got. We'll come up here and try to get as many answers as possible. Now we've got some other stuff to go spray, so stay tuned. You're going to see some really cool videos coming out from Sada.